Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and a re-recording of my Colouring Heaven tour. Of course it is the longest video that I have to re-record because of technical issues, so ugh, of course. But nevertheless, we're here and we're doing it. So I have quite a substantial Colouring Heaven magazine. I know last time I recorded this, it took me an hour 40 to go through. I am going to try and not to ramble that much this time because it's midnight. I need to get this processed and uploaded so it's ready because, yeah, problems. Anyway, <laughs> so I have two stacks in front of me of Colouring Heaven and this is book, uh, number five of the tour. I will link all the previous parts down below. If for some reason number six has been put up before number five, there's been issues. Gonna try and get this up tonight though. Um, so yeah, because this is a re-record, there is one picture that I have completed since the tour. So I will mention that because I also recorded it as a finishless whip. So you're getting a sneak peek of it. Yeah, it's been a thing. Anyway, let's get into this tour again. <laughs> so I'm just going to move this stack out of the way. And we will quickly go through this stack. This stack is all the Colouring Heaven that I own that I have not coloured in yet, which is quite substantial. Um, so the first one you'll see on top is the Wingling Special. I have not coloured in this because this is one of the latest purchases. Colouring Heaven is very delayed getting to New Zealand. In fact, I believe this is September 2022's issue. And it was only released in New Zealand this month. Uh, well, I'm recording this in February, so January it was released. So very recent issue for us, but very delayed release. Um, I don't actually own any of a Jasmine Beckett Griffith. I'm not the biggest fan of these cartoon eyes, but I had to get this issue because it has a whole thing about dragons and there's also dragons with dice and I am a D&D &D nerd I love D&D &D and tabletop roleplay games and so I had to get it just for these issues these images so yeah um the next one is the Cabbage Patch Kids I know I want to color one in here like my cousin's Cabbage Patch doll she had a Cabbage Patch Kid which has now been given to my niece. So I know I want to colour one like that doll. Also, if you want to have a closer look at any of these issues for one reason or another, please let me know. Though I do know Colouring Heaven do put through a little flip through on their channel. So, you know, you can find flip throughs of most of these on the internet already. Uh, so we have the Element Special by Anne Stokes. And after I got this issue, I actually went and brought the Anne Stokes coloring book. And I actually prefer the coloring book because a lot of these images, the coloring book is actually bigger. And a lot of these images are shrunk down versions of the coloring book. And a lot of the detail gets lost in the reduction. So, yeah. Um, but these images in here that aren't in the coloring book. And so, you know, it's still cool to have. And it made me get the coloring book. It's what I like about Colouring Heaven is you do often discover new artists or see artists that you wouldn't usually see. Uh, so the next one is the Starry Night special. I have not coloured in this one and I entirely forgot about it until I found this for the flip through. Um, and I said in the previous recording that I was absolutely kicking myself for not colouring in this one because it is stunning so I actually have this one out as one of my ones that I want to work in because it's so pretty so I'll just put that one back up <laughs> um, so the next one I have is Pets Rock I haven't forgotten about this one because I've showed so many people this issue it's just so funny it's like humanoid animals and they've all got little personalities and there's so many little jokes in here it's a really funny issue the next one not worked in is, is a stained glass flowers collection. Now this one I wasn't actually going to buy, but I saw Colouring Heaven's tutorial on how to colour stained glass and I thought that would be really fun to try. And then as well as that, in the um, next flip through, you'll see one of my um, books I have is this Disney stained glass book and 
I colour in that one a lot and it's this is sort of like a when that one's finished I can work in this one in the same style if need be but I can also practice that stained glass effect. Percy and the Park Keeper. I had never heard of this series but I love the illustrations in here. It's so cute and again I say this I say this so many times in the first record I'm gonna say it so many times I don't know why I haven't colored in here I guess it's just time but it's so cute and oh, I can see a lot of like watercolor media would be really fun to practice in here I know why I haven't colored in the steampunk special that is because the this is one of my earlier issues that I brought uh, this is issue 74 I think my earliest is 72 um, but yeah this one it just intimidated me it's got so many like metallics and grayscale and I've never done anything like that and I just loved it so much I was terrified of ruining it I'm not so scared now so I think I should tackle it then we have the two like specific collections which is sea life and horses um, anyone that knows me knows that I am a mermaid at heart. I love all the mermaid stuff. Also, I noticed Rita Berman's in here, so I need to colour in here because I don't own any Rita Berman and she's on my wish list. So at least I can colour some of her images in here. And then the horses collection I got because I was a horse girl when I was a kid. And I actually had this book when I was like 11 or 12. And I spent an entire summer drawing every single horse from this book. And I think there's like 80 horses. It was quite a book. But it had a lot of um, things about like muscle structure and shading and how to develop tone and texture and stuff. Because it was a book geared at adults. Even though I was, it was before I went to high school. So it was definitely too old for me. But I learned so much from that book. And I freaking loved it. And I wish I kept all the art. I either threw it all away. Or it it was in a box that got mouldy of my childhood art yeah there's a lot of art that I've lost over the years but I was a horse girl so this I got for horse girl memories <laughs> and then we have the Vikings issue which is really really neat and I love the fact it's got like these little information things about it um so cool and hollow moon art I'd never heard of sorry I should be saying who all the individual artists are um, I have got them listed down below and any of the collection ones where it's multiple artists I've tried to list as many as I can um, but yeah these some really neat images in this one and then the Wildwood Witch is special oh this is another one that I forgot about on my shelf until the first flip through and I was like I need to get back to this one as well because there's like mushrooms and dragons and witches and fae and it's just everything I'm into in colouring so that one was also on my tackle soon pile <laughs> and then the last one I have not coloured in is the Nouveau Fairy special and I think this is one of my earlier ones because this is issue 72 um, and I said in the last flip through I should actually do something in this this month because it's technically February where you meant to colour lots of fae so this would be really appropriate for February to colour in yeah well that was a much quicker turnaround for this lot <laughs> it's good when I don't ramble um, but yeah so that's all the uncoloured colouring heaven Oh, but now we have all the coloured and colouring heaven and some of these I've coloured in a lot like this one which is by Maud Lamone. Lamone? I am probably mispronouncing it she also I think she does the Legends of Japan one she's got one other issue and I really love her portraiture work um, so we have this one here which is an older older piece for me I think it was 21 that I did this one I wrote it down as 22 but it wasn't last year it was I think it was 2021 that I did this one um but oh it's just so shimmery and shiny I would do this a lot differently now um this is very like early coloring styles for me I haven't done any background I'd push the shadows a lot more but it's still pretty cute 
Uh, this one, I believe I used Faber-Castell Classic Colors and Crayola Glitter Markers for the whole piece. And then this one. So this is what I do a lot in this issue, is I actually black out the frame. And I think it just makes the finished piece pop so much more. So I really like this effect. Um, but this is Bohemian Rhapsody. And I know I used my Faber-Castell Albert Durer's. Um, and then metallic gel markers, just generic brand ones. There's some polychromos. There's some alcohol markers. There's a white gel pen, because this is before I got my Posca. Uh, I think that's everything, but so pretty. Um, and I was really trying to push blue, green, especially green and yellows. So that's not my comfort, but then I ended up adding in purple anyway, because I like purple and blue. I don't mind purple, yellow and blue and stuff, but green is not a colour I tend to work with a lot, or I have to push myself to work with green, so, yeah. And unfortunately, the markers did bleed through on that one. So, this one here, I used uh, alcohol markers, polychromos gel pen, and metallic gel pen. And I was really trying to work with, again, a colour palette I don't use a lot, which is like reds, browns, and peaches. Um, but then because we had the flowers, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to introduce a little bit of green, so I'll tie that into her eyes. And then I was like, oh, I'll include it in the fan, and then it'll bring your eye right around. And I hated it because your eye just went straight to the fans. I should have kept them all yellow or done brown or something. And I tried using gold metallic gel pen to sort of blotch out the green but it just made this real swampy green color that is hideous now I know enough that I could go in there and like block it out with paint or markers or something and fix it up at the time I didn't know how to fix it so I just worked with it the best I could and I still really like the page I just hate this part <laughs> but it's part of the learning process and now I know better ways of fixing up and also better color placement um, and the only other thing I did was outline the girl with a, I think, a Faber-Castell pit pen or like just like a fine liner or something just because I felt like she's getting a bit lost so I just wanted to pop her out a bit more. Um, and then the gift of life. I love this page. This is like it's favorite colors. Um, I was really trying to work on my marker blending for this one. So this is primarily markers, not even pencil shading. There's a little bit in the flowers, the blush. I think I did like the really, really tiny, fine details that are really hard to get in markers because they bleed all over the page. Oh, excuse me. And so this one is alcohol markers, uh, white gel pen, a little bit of pencil and then this necklace is done with the Crayola metallic markers the terrible markers but in the set there is an iridescent marker and I wish Crayola would release this marker on its own because it is gorgeous like the rest of the metallic pens are absolute rubbish but this oh so pretty and then this is my first ever piece of stickles. This is the first time I used stickles and was like, oh my god, I love. So, yeah, I love this page. So pretty. That was March 2022 when the love affair of stickles started. So this one is... Uh, was done for a kind of like a prompt challenge I used to be part of this artist discord where the um, person who ran it would create a prompt every month using three words and the idea was you'd draw a piece of art but because I was a colorist I asked could I use coloring books to kind of fill in the brief and she's like yeah of course um, so this one, the prompt words were Cupid space, and it had to have the emotion of um, fear, I think it was. So for this one, originally it had like clouds in the background, and I blocked it out with um, the Reeves water soluble pastels to make like a galaxy background, and then I used a white gel pen for all the stars. 
And then I used alcohol markers, Prisma and Polychromos pencils on the characters. And I made her sort of like an alien space cupid who is feeding on this person's fear of love. So it's not like that she's making him fall in love. She's taking away the fear of falling in love, like the fear of commitment or something. So that was kind of the concept behind it. And then the wings, I actually used some glitter glue that I made myself using Mod Podge and a combination of different glitters, um, which is fun because you can make your own color blends. So this is a combination of like a couple of greens and a couple of golds. Um, and it makes a really cool like transition color for the glitter. So there's lots of different reflex in there. I used to do that before I had a lot of stickles and different colors. Um, and it's still good to do because you can really customize your blends. Uh, there's still a few more in here. I've done a lot in here. Technically it's a work in progress because I've blacked out the frame. I normally black out the frame after I've completed the piece. So I don't know why I pre-blacked that one out, but I did it. <laughs> Uh, so we have this one, which is very inspired by, like, childhood Barbies. She just reminded me so much of, like, Barbie, so I really gave her sort of that Barbie colour to you. Um, and I was very proud of the hair because I really focused on doing the hair with only markers, which normally I need a lot of pencil to define. But, yeah, the hair was all markers. I did have to use pencils on the skin because the purple I normally use to shade skin had died out because I'd used it entirely on my favourite page. <laughs> and then I used a little bit of a glitter gel pen for some of the details and a white gel pen for the eyes. Yeah, she's very sweet. And then this one is a work in progress. So this one uses a copper sharpie or paint pen and then alcohol markers. Um, and that's as far as I've gotten. I still need to go in with like pencils to define all the details. I think the only thing I'd started defining was the hair a little bit with markers, but I haven't done any pencil details in there. And also once I black out the frame, it'll really pop as well, especially with that white that I was thinking of leaving stark white. So yeah, work in progress. And I think that's everything. Oh, that one's sweet too. This would be another one that would be quite good to do for February because there's a lot of fairies in this issue. Speaking of a fairy issue. <laughs> Fledgling, fledging fairies. So this one is designed by Christine Karen, who, by the way, has a YouTube channel, if you did not know, and it's really neat to see her use of colour, which definitely influenced a few pages in this issue. Now, this is technically the issue I have worked in the most. And the reason for that is I actually took this issue on me when I went on holiday to visit a lovely, lovely friend of mine. And... At the time, I was coming home from holiday and I was about two hours into a nine hour journey and unfortunately, I crashed the car. I did not hurt anyone. I was not hurt. I walked out with scrapes and bruises and cuts, um, but the car was totaled off and it's quite a story, but it was very terrifying and very traumatic for me. And because there was still a seven hour journey to get home and I was not in any state to go home, I was taken back to my friends and I ended up staying here for two and a half weeks and she looked after me while I just got through the trauma of the crash and built up the confidence to go in a car again. Um, and I will forever love her for that because she is amazing. But because this was one of the very few colouring things I had on me, I did a lot of work in this issue. And I was using colouring to kind of help me with the trauma of everything. So, yeah, there's quite a bit done in here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's just get into it. There's a lot to get into. So, yeah, this is definitely one that is influenced by... Christine Karen's actual work and her use of colour. Um, I really tried to reproduce that effect. Not as effectively as her, but it was a lot of fun to try. 
So this one uses Polychromos pencils, uh, Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolours, a white Posca, a gold glitter pen, and I believe that's it, because I think that's what I had on me. So there's a lot that will use those sort of combinations. Like so. <laughs> And the same combinations again. So yeah, a lot of these I can't really give a lot to. They were just me wanting to paint really cute, sweet, happy things because car crash. I didn't want to think about it. This one I can talk about. Um, so I started colouring this one. And I actually, because this one is a girl with glasses, with a green off-the-shoulder sweater. Well, it wasn't green, but you know, it was an off-the-shoulder sweater reading a book that obviously was dealing with fae and fantasy type things and was like oh my god it's me i mean it doesn't look anything like me it kind of does but you know i mean the original sketch obviously looks nothing like me but i colored her with like the blue hair and the blue nails that i often have and then like the purple lipstick and the pink purple eyeshadow that i often do and my green sweater and i don't actually have many button-up shirts so i just colored that black um, but yeah, it was just like a fun little escape. And then when I got home, I colored in the Fae with, um, silver metallic pens and just used some Posca for the random bits in the background. So this one I finished off when I got home, but I did most of it when I was staying with my friend. And yeah, she's very sweet. I do like her. This one I just used Polychromos on, um... super sweet nothing to really talk about about it it was just me wanting to color happy little things so yeah polychromos and then the glitter for the butterflies i love that hair color and then the watercolor the um the, 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 the polychromos and then the gold glitter and rather than using the Posca for the eye shinies, I actually used the gold glitter in his eyes. So he's got like a little shiny reflect in his eyes when the light hits it. Instead of using that big bright white Posca because he's very subtle in his colorings and very muted tones. For me, this is very muted for me. <laughs> oh, I love her. She is one of my favorites. This one is just polychromos with some Posca for the shinies. This little creature. So adorable. So this one, um, it's called a pea alfling, according to the title. So I actually looked up peas um, and different like sprouts and stuff. And he's a plant called a hyacinth bean vine. And it's a bean sprout that's got like this bright pink edge it's so pretty and that was the inspiration for this piece and I started this with polychromos and then when I got home I finished it with prisma so that I could use like my neon pink prisma because I don't often get to use it I thought it'd be fun to use it here um so yeah that's just pencil work combination pencils I don't think did I do Posca I didn't even do Posca in the eyes She's still got quite a bit of shiny in her eyes, so it's all good. Right, I think that's the last of the ones in order. Because for a while there, I was just working in order. Because I didn't even want to pick a page. It was literally, I just worked in order. I didn't even want to think. I literally just coloured in order. Again, I was really using this as a bit of a crux. Um, so this one I did when I got back home. And I used my Prisma colours for it. And then... After I coloured in the wings, I used a terrible cheap glitter glue. There's a number of these that you'll see as we go through. I did a whole bunch of them in one afternoon and didn't realise how badly they smush. Um, I might have even talked about this in some of the other parts. I cannot remember on this stage, but yeah, I hate that. And it's like if I just look at that, it's really sweet, but that ruined it, so... Yeah, and it was funny when I recorded this for the first flip through. I actually hadn't done the eye shinies. I'd obviously glitter glued 
left it to dry and been so pissed off I just closed it and didn't look back and didn't realise I hadn't finished putting the Posca highlights on here. So in the last one I actually sat there and did the Posca highlights very quickly. <laughs> but yeah, I was very happy with how that little part came out. They're very cute. And of course it caused bleed through because it was horrible. Um, do, 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 do. So then we have the dreamy phase. So this one's a work in progress technically. Um, I've just used alcohol markers and then I smushed around some of not the same glitter glue as the pink one I just mentioned, another one. It's like a glitter gel, but it doesn't seal properly. And every time I touch it, it lifts up. So I need to go over it and seal the glitter in place, but I can't do that till I finish off the pencil work. So I need to get in there and finish off the pencil work. But she's very sweet. I do like her. This one is also been um, prepped with markers, but I need to go in there and finish off the pencil work. And unfortunately, that glitter gel did bleed through into here, so I need to go and add some blue eyeshadow just to create that little bit of blue there. And then this part, I figured I could just do some clouds with like a sponge or something to stamp on some sort of cloud effect. Um, but yeah, I know I want to put some iridescence on the wings and stuff and I just need to go in with some pencils and darken some of the shadows and a few bits and pieces and bring out some highlights, particularly on the mushroom and the bottles and stuff. So it's really just refining. It's really not that much longer. I just need to do it. This one, however, is finished and this is one I did back on holiday. So this one is just Polychromos and Posca. Um, and we have one dot of bleed through, but I don't mind that. It's fine. Yeah, she is so sweet. I do love her. I love how she turned out. Um, I think I don't got. So, they've got this work in progress, which I think I did when I got back home, and I literally have just done the leaves. No idea where I was going with this one. I just coloured in the leaves, apparently. <laughs> and then we have this one so if I can I will figure out a way to insert a clip of how this looked in the previous flip through um, basically Justice Faye was coloured her wings weren't done the butterflies weren't done on her dress um, the basket wasn't done the flowers weren't done like this was very much just her body and her dress was done in hot pink and in the last flip through, I was like, oh, that would be a perfect sort of Valentine's fairy to do for February. So I made a note that I wanted to do this. And I knew going into it, I wanted to slap like a ton of glitter on there. So you can see that there's a lot of glitter on there. Um, so yeah, the original, original girl, I think, was Polychromos and Prismacolor. I finished it with Prismacolor. And then Cotman, Watercolors, um glitter glue which is stickles and then a knockoff stickles by Craftsmart that it's a very close dupe for stickles and there's some poskas in the background for all the random dots as well so yeah it's very chaotic and over the top but I do love the results and then we have this one which I think is mostly done I've come back to it a few times I think I just need to put like some dots in the center of these flowers just to differentiate them and then maybe add some sparkle or something and maybe just a couple of glossy highlights on her and it would just help her feel a little bit more complete um maybe darken the branch a little bit it's just feeling a bit meh um i know i colored this with markers and then put it back on the shelf and then pulled it back out and then colored in some pencil and said yep it was done the second time and then put it on the shelf and then when i came to the flip through i was like yeah it's not really done need to look at it again and unfortunately this red alcohol marker it um something about it causes staining um it's on the other side as well and it's in particular this red of this cheap brand that i'm using so i need to upgrade my markers for a better set i've got some copics and some um pro marker and flex markers but a majority of my markers are very cheap no label or white label markers that I just used to base under and for most books it's fine but I find in the um, coloring heaven paper this paper's not acid 
um, acid proof so over time it sort of destroys the markers it just doesn't counteract well um, then we have fairy magic and this one I think is done I think the only thing I wanted to do was to go around and just black out the frame similar to what I did in the um, fantasy figures issue just to sort of seal it and make it look complete this one is water soluble crayons and alcohol markers and polychromos and stickles and then we have the whimsy fairy which again I need to I have gone in and done some pencil work on her her wings need a bit of work and then the background needs a bit of work I think mostly it just needs some sort of texture in the background it's very flat for the background so maybe going in with like a like a sponge with some paint if I can control it or just something to help texturize that background would help it be a little bit more like something um, but yeah it's a good little work in progress and that's it and I just have to be careful because behind this page is a whole bunch of information relating to my car crash because <laughs> at the time this was all I had <laughs> oh goodness and so then we have the Fairytopia special and this one is by Mystic Art Mirrors and they have a very interesting colouring style, a uh, drawing design style and quite a bit of this issue has been done but a lot of this issue I tackle with just alcohol markers very simply um, and I used this a lot at the end of last year when I was completing my Bachelor in Psychology because I would just be at that stage where I was at mind burnout go to pull this out spend half an hour coloring a page and then be like boom done and then head back to my final essays so there's a little bit done in here but a lot of it was really good stress relief and I just kind of used whatever colors I felt like and whatever media I felt like at the time but primarily alcohol markers so yeah this one is alcohol markers and then stickles and the iridescent Crayola marker I think this is where it died and some glitter gel pens and I think a little bit of white pencil but I don't really do a lot of pencil work on these ones I just kind of go for it with alcohol markers mostly so yeah this one's alcohol markers and then a gold gel pen I don't think even like it's a good brand or anything I think it's a pretty cheap gold gel pen but I like it this one's slightly sticky because I used a 3d puff paint that I got given I think it's pearl drops or something but it's got like a slightly sticky residue but it's more like vinyl sticky not like tacky sticky um, but I need to come back and finish this because I love the colors that are here it's really pretty but even then like if I don't come back I'm happy to call that finished it's still very pretty I think maybe if I just got like a white Posca and did some like line highlights just to sort of differentiate give it some tone it would be quite pretty I mean it's pretty as is um, and then So then we have this one which is literally just alcohol markers and that really terrible cheap glitter gel that I really have got to seal. You can see it on the side there. <laughs> now I've got to be careful because some of these might be construed as naked. Um, we don't want to breach stuff. I think this is the next one. Um, so this one I did actually spend longer on and I was using alcohol markers and pencils and I colored it all and I was like ah oh, perfect and then I pulled out the glitter glue and this was another one of the cheap glitter glues and this one bled like crazy and I was really really sad because it was really pretty but then I realized it looked a lot like um, 
vitiligo, I think it is. It's a skin condition where you lose pigmentation in your skin. And I really thought for a moment, I was like, actually, that's really beautiful. And I love how it works. And the placement of where it bled was actually quite reminiscent of some of the photos when I was investigating skin conditions. So I pulled out my Posca and I really tried to match a lot of the patches to where I saw in my research it was common to um, feel like to have the um, condition present but also trying to keep in mind where it had bleed specifically because it was just on the green it bleed it didn't bleed around here it didn't bleed on here or here it was just the green skin that it bled on so yeah and then I think that there is one more but this one gotta be careful there we go <laughs> there might be some specific parts in here even though to me she's more of a deer creature than anything else or a bunny hybrid I don't know but just in case we're just gonna you know cover some bits um this is a work in progress it's just alcohol markers I do really like this one though I need to get back to it I need to ha oh. <laughs> Next we have the Gods and Goddesses special. This is by Jash Lee and oh, their designs are stunning. And the only one I've worked on so far is Aphrodite um, and this was a Crayola pencil experiment and then a cheap gold gel pen has also been used. Oh, excuse me. Oh goodness, it's getting late. Um, but I did say in the last flip through that I needed to try and finish this for February because obviously Aphrodite is a goddess of love and it's February but also it was just really really pretty and I wanted to finish it so I need to do that all right creatures of the night we're gonna leave for last because that has my favorite ever piece of coloring in it so I think that's an appropriate one to do last the Neko Girls special. So I've done this one using alcohol markers and stickles. I quite often do use alcohol markers in Colouring Heaven because they are single sided. You can. And then this one is a work in progress and it's just using alcohol markers. I did try to practice using like blending the skin tones and stuff it hasn't really worked too well so i do need to go in there with some pencils just to create some definition and clean things up a bit and that's all i've done in this issue and then we have the mermaid specials this has a mixture of artists some really really cute ones in here but I think this one is the only one I have done by Mariola Budek and oh just so pretty so this one uses um, watercolor the Winsor Newton Cotman's and then Kaiser Craft shimmer spray in the background and then the jellyfish and the mermaid are polychromos on top of alcohol markers um, and then I used a white Posca to go around everything and added a bunch of bubbles. Actually, no, I might have, the bubbles might have already been there. I can't remember if I added those or if they were there. But then I used um, stickles on the bubbles and then on her eyeshadow and lips. And I really loved this page. And the cool thing about this was once I completed this page, I'm part of the Friends of Colouring Heaven facebook group which is coloring heaven's official group um and you can post you know pictures of what you've done in coloring heaven and if every once in a while they will pull pictures from there to put on their social media and they pulled this one out to put on their social media which was really cool to see see it was a little like ee. Um, i think that's everything in here it's going much quicker this time, but I know last time I flicked through them a lot more pedantically, so whereas now I kind of know what's in each issue. 
So yeah, this is the, an extra one by Maud Lamone that I have. This is one of the newer ones that have come out to New Zealand. Um, I have a work in progress in here. I love her work so much. Her portraiture is just stunning. Um, so I've used some alcohol markers and I've started doing a little bit of pencil shading on these flowers. And then I used the Liquitex acrylic iridescent ink in bright gold, um, which I need to go over and do another coat and just clean up some of my applications of. But I really like the color scheme that I'm using here. It's very spring and bright and pretty. So yeah, need to finish off that one. And then another recent one is Ancient Egypt. And I have this one here and I was literally trying out a new cheap set of pencils. Didn't care, didn't really work that well. I don't like the pencils. This page is not ruined however because I'll grab an alcohol marker and I'll um, use that to sort of blend through and eat down the pencil and then I can work back over it with polychromos to build up tones because I really like this page. It's just I happened to buy the pencils and I had this issue in my bag because I just brought it and I was like meh I'll try it and then the pencils were terrible. <laughs> Alright, and then we have the Christmas special and the Halloween special. And these are the 2021 issues because the 2022 issues are not here in New Zealand yet. So they are coming. I suppose we should do Halloween first since that's technically first. Um, there's some very cute ones in here. So we have this work in progress and this is a piece by Hannah Lynn. So I'm going to turn to this page so that you can see but one thing you'll notice in my collection is I do not own any Hannah Lynn. I am not a big fan of how she does her eyes or these big thick lines. It's just a personal choice. I know that Hannah Lynn is super popular with colorists. It's just not my cup of tea and I'm going to reach for something else over Hannah Lynn every time. So because of that, I decided to experiment and see if removing the lines would help me like a piece a lot more. So this is just a bit of an experiment piece. One day I should come back to it because I really like how it turned out. Like removing the lines definitely helped me in terms of seeing the piece and... Yeah, it looks a lot more like oil painting and like her, like um, Jasmine Beckett Griffith's actual painted work and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's got a real painterly effect and I really like it. So, um, and at the time, all I had to base out the lines was some like cream acrylic paint. I didn't even have white, so that's what it's based with. <laughs> but I have some gesso and stuff now um, that I can use and yeah, I need to maybe finish this off I don't mind if I don't finish it off it was really just an experiment but I should because I do like how this is looking so far and then we have this one which is so pretty and um, this is by Agnes Guerrero I've probably mispronounced that and um, so the background is distress inks and then she is alcohol markers, tiny touch of pencil and stickles and a white gel pen. And I think, oh no, we've got one more. This is by Sarah Richter. Uh, this is alcohol markers and stickles. And I really was trying to just use alcohol markers in this one. I really was trying to practice those sort of blends with just markers. I was very pleased with how it turned out. And then we have this work in progress. This is Are You My Mummy by Simona Cadini. Again, just based with alcohol markers, nothing else. And that's it. And then we have the Christmas special. I do like how the specials often are collections of various artists because you find all sorts of really cool new ones to go and find more of like this artist here this is Rabinka Fantasy um, and this is Christmas Kittens and this one I think at the time I had some quite bad flare-ups in my hands so I was just practicing with watercolors and then 
um, Inktense pencils, which I was trying to work with, really blended out, so it was very watercolory. Uh, it's very pale for me, but I really like how it turned out, even if the paper is very crinkled. I don't mind crinkled paper. I think that's the only one I've done in here. Yeah, because, again, when I would have been doing most of my Christmas colour sewing, I was trapped over on holiday with my friends, so <laughs> I had none of my colouring for Christmas. And then by the time I got back, I just was over Christmas colouring. Because, yeah, the accident happened at the start of December and I didn't get home until just before Christmas. So no Christmas colouring this year. Um, so then we have the Gothic Fantasy Special, which is a whole book of Inez Guerrero's work. And I said in the previous recording that I need to do more in this book because, oh, their work. Their work is stunning. And again, this is another one that I forgot I had on the shelf until we flicked through. But this is the only um, work in progress I have. And it's all oh, alcohol marker. And unfortunately, because this is a grayscale piece, the background I did in a too darker blue. So her dress actually comes up and looks like the ocean. So a lot of that's been lost, which I was really sad about. But then I realized that oh, what I could do is I could do like using a sponge to create like a real cloudy, misty, like she's dancing in the mist and creating the mist, which could be really cool as well. So... I think that's the route I'm going to take. And the colours of her outfit are actually based on my lovely friend who belly dances. And she has this really beautiful bright blue belly dancing outfit. So that's why she's got bright blue. But yeah, these. Oh, that was another one I had on the shelf for need to work in. And then we have Flower Girls. And this is, oh, I'm going to butcher this, Mayumi. Ogihara and Ogihara and then Anastasia Koldavira Koldareva I am butchering and I know and I'm sorry but it's just so pretty this one uh, so this one's a work in progress um, done her skin and her hair uh, no I've got to finish her skin I've done most of her hair though now because it's been a while since I've worked on this I would go in and actually darken that hair a little bit more as well so but I do like the colours used in that one although unfortunately it is that red that's no one to leak so I've got to work on that um, and then I know I have a finish off in here because I love it this one um, which the face actually reminds me a lot of Selena Gomez. It looks like her face shape to me. But I really love how the hair turned out and the ombre of the hair. Um, and then I was really trying to practice with creating like a smooth gradient background and markers. Didn't achieve it, but we tried. And then I couldn't be bothered colouring in all the lavender, so I just covered it in stickles. <laughs> if in doubt, cover stuff in glitter. That's what I often do. Um, and I haven't done any of Anastasia's work, but I need to because oh, it's just so pretty. I did say you'd hear me say I need to colour more a lot in this video. <laughs> and then the very last one, whoops, I shouldn't throw this one down, is Creatures of the Night. So again, this is, I think this is technically my oldest issue because this is issue 70. And this contains one of my favourite ever pieces of colouring. So because this is one of the first issues I ever brought of Colouring Heaven, um, it does have some older colouring pages in here. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with this now. Um, it's not how I would colour now, but I like to have it for the process. So like there's no background, the shadows haven't really been pushed all that much. Still uses bright colours. Um, there's no gel pen for highlights. The gold is literally a gold, gold coloured pencil because I don't want to try and create gold so it's the gold prisma colors this is all prism colors by the way um yeah there's a lot i would do differently now but this is back when i was using coloring to try and retrain my hands um so some of these are better than others like i haven't technically finished these background pieces i think my hands were starting to flare up again here um i do like the color that i created on the skin though 
do like his skin. And see, now I would like create a fire background or something because that would look really sick with it. Or even just blocking it out black so she pops um, and putting some highlights on here. But again, part of the journey. Um, this one I was trying some water soluble pencils and like now I look at this and I can tell that I wasn't able to create a smooth base because um, the water soluble pencils so ink tints you don't have to be too pedantic on because there's so much pigment in them that you can kind of blend it out but I know with watercolor pencils you do still need to have a semi solid smooth base to have a smooth color um, and I wasn't able to achieve that. I don't think I even blended out some of these areas um, and I smushed over the lines a lot because my hands weren't great which you'll see in the next one because I didn't even finish this one because I was trying to go around the lines with a gold gel pen and I was just struggling so much I just kind of gave up on this page. But again it's important for the journey you know. And I can look back at this page and remember how hard it was just for me to do this, even though now I know I would do a lot more. So, all right. And then there's quite a few in here like this because when I started really developing my skills and then I came back to this coloring book, because it had all those, particularly that bat at the start, I was like, I'm going to cut out pages and color them separately and then frame them because otherwise I wanted to chuck out the whole book. I didn't want to have that failure around. Bad attitude. Don't have that attitude. It's a progression. It's not a failure. Um, so there's a few pages in this book that are cut out like this. I don't know, I regret this. So because I've lost pages not only in this one and a couple of other coloring heavens like the Nouveau fairies I know a couple of pages are missing in that one and I think there may be some pages missing from this one too so regret that um but yeah this one is just based in alcohol marker um I would like to finish it I reckon it will be really beautiful finished I can see where I was going with it and then another one that I based I think originally I was thinking should be a mermaid so the colour that I grabbed for her skin was like coral and I was like oh perfect coral is ocean that's fine slapped it down and then when I came back to it to colour it I was like uh it's you know it's not really mermaidy like why don't you do green skin or blue skin or purple skin you did what could be coloured to be um European skin so I was just like well that was silly and then I just shelved it um, now I have enough skills I could bring in like scales and make it green and bring in a green tone tint to it or even use the orange as an underbase and work with the complementary which would be blue and just use this as an undertone so yeah or darken it or lighten it there's a lot of ways I could go now with that so um I just want to check because I know that's the I think it's just okay so the very last one is my favorite ever piece of coloring so it's not this one it's the next page but I just want to keep it so that I can like show you properly um so yeah the next one is a combination of alcohol markers polychromos pencils gel pens and prisma a gel white pen and prisma color and I love this page and I'm still very tempted because it has been cut out to put it in a frame because I love it so much and that is the keeper of the fire and this is like it's not been cut very straight also another terrible point I just kind of ripped it out which is really bad but I love how this page turned out I just I love it so much and especially because I really focused on trying to create metallic gold without using metallic gold pens or pencils this is all done in pencil to create the illusion of gold and then also working with five individual light sources and how those lights would interact and reflect on everything which is really interesting but I love how it turned out and it's still to my day this day one of my favorite ever pieces of coloring so 
so yeah that has been the entirety of my coloring heaven collection including everything i've colored and all my work in progresses this video has recorded for the second time much quicker than the first time which is lovely <laughs> definitely didn't go through them as much though so if you do want a closer look at anything please let me know i know i kind of flipped through this quite quickly but also i'm very tired and this was a long ass video to re-record as is but that's okay i'd rather re-record and show you properly and stuff like that so yeah, please let me know down below which is your favourite of the pages that I have coloured. If there is any pages that you think I need to finish, you know, yell at me, pressure me in the comments to get my bit into gear and get more coloured. Um, and if you've got any of these issues and you want to do a buddy colour as well, I've started doing a lot of buddy colours and I'm really enjoying them. Plus they motivate me to get pages done, which is great. But yes, thank you so much for watching. If you're not already, hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit comments. You know what to do. YouTube algorithm, you got to do all this stuff. It sucks, but it's fun. And I love connecting with you guys. So I'm rambling now. I'm going to go have a drink and let my throat recover and start editing this in a hurry to get it up in time. <sighs> so that I can replace the one that's terrible and upload it right now. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in part six for the final. Bye.